this is the first problem of today's contest and in this problem we are given that Elise and Bob have bought a ribbon consisting of n parts. Now they want to paint it. Elise, first Elise will paint every part of the ribbon into m colors and for each part she can choose its color arbitrarily. Then Bob will choose at most k parts of the ribbon and repaint them into one color. Uh, like uh, for Bob you cannot know, choose arbitrarily any color while painting these k parts at most k parts. Now Bob would like to have all the parts have the same color while Elise wants to have like uh, this shouldn't be true like all the parts shouldn't have the same color. So we are asked to find that can Elise paint in such a way that it's not possible for Bob to after like uh, having his move that is at, like choosing at most k parts and coloring them into same color. This is not true that all the parts are having the same color. So let me explain this. So here is it. So there are n parts in a ribbon. Let's say this is the ribbon and these are the n parts. So Elias will color all of these in some color. Let's say there are four colors. So after a point, Elias, like first of all, Elias, like if Elias has four colors, either Elias can color, like use one color, more number of times. Let's say Elias colored all these in one color and this, these in second color. So this is not optimal for Elias. Why? Because Elias, then Bob just needs to color these three, like these three into the same color that is same as this. So optimal thing for Elias would be that she'll color, like she'll try to minimize the maximum number of times a color is being used. So let's say this is the first color, second color, third color, fourth color, then first color, second color, third color. Like this way, Elias will minimize the maximum count or the maximum number of times a color is being used. So to find this, we just need to find number of parts in the ribbon divided by total number of colors and seal of this. Why seal? Because let's say there are, in this case, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven parts, three colors. If you take seal of this, you'll get two. Not two, one, two, three, four. This is four colors. You'll get two. So basically, there is this first color. You can see that this is being used twice. There are other colors also that are being used twice, but this simply denotes that this is the maximum count of a color that is being used. So first of all, is this part clear to everyone? Now, what do Bob needs? Bob needs that there are, okay, this is the maximum number of times a color is being used. So let's leave this and Bob will try to color all of these into the same color as one. So what Bob, like uh, for the, the winning condition for Bob is that let's say this is count. So N minus count, these are the number of parts that Bob needs to color. This should be less than or equals to K. Otherwise, if this is more than K, then Elias wins, otherwise Bob wins. So, okay, I'll explain the seal part again. See, this is basically, these are the N parts in the ribbon. And this is the number of colors that are available. So we are finding using this seal division, we are finding what does the maximum number of times a color will be used. A color will appear in these N ribbons. Why? Because that is the color which Bob will try to have in the final configuration. Like the all the parts will should have that color only according for Bob. So allies will try to minimize this. In order to minimize this, this is the minimum count 
minimum number of times a color will be used. Is it clear now? Okay. So let me show you the implementation. So this is the implementation. I have first taken n, m, and k as input. Then I have, this is my count, like the minimum number of times or the maximum count of color, uh, like what should be the, what is the minimum possible value of it? The, uh, like the color, which is I think maximum number of times. So this is how you take seal. If you, ha uh, if you have to, by the way, if you have to take seal of A by B, either you can do this in double, or you can do this in float and then use seal function. But if you don't want to in, like do those things, either you can do directly this a divided by b modulo a percentage b is more than zero. This should also work. And or you can do something like a plus b minus one divided by now. Why this works? Basically, this is this will give you the quotient, and this is basically checking if there is some remainder just add one to this, basically either true or false, right? And this is also the same thing. This is B. So we are just adding B minus one. So even if the remainder like A by A modulo B is one, this will shift it to the next, like uh, this will increase the quotient by one. So I have used this thing. So seal division and then checking if N minus this count is more than k so you need to print yes that is it's possible for allies to print in such a way that bob bob's condition is never met otherwise we print no is it clear okay so let's go to the next problem so in the next problem, we're given that let's call an array A beautiful if you can make all its elements the same by using the following operation an arbitrary number of times, possibly zero. Choose an index i between two and the second last index inclusive such that the previous and the next value are same and then replace the current value with like the value of those neighboring values. So we are given that we already have a beautiful array. We need to find what is the minimum number of elements you can like you need to remove in order to like is to make it not beautiful. So swapping the elements is not possible. And if it's completely and like impossible to do so, we need to print minus one. So first of all, we are given that we are given that the array is already beautiful. So it means that either all the numbers are same or it's possible for us to like what we are doing. We are like if these two numbers are same, then this number can be made same as this. If we had one here, one here, we had anything here like nine, we could have made this one. So this is the kinds of operation, right? So if the array is beautiful using like looking at these two, like doing operations like this, we can make all the elements same or they are already same, right? But the thing is, can you ever change this number? No, right? This element cannot be changed. Same thing holds for this. But if you look at this, this element cannot be changed. So. The first thing, first of all, if, if the array, like all the elements are same, all the elements are same. In that case, the answer is directly minus one. So now we are not going to like include this case. Now the elements are different. So what we need to do since this element cannot be changed. Now tell me if this is, I'm having one here and this element cannot be changed and the array is beautiful. Finally, what element should be there in each of these places? Anyone. The first element was one and the array is beautiful. That is all the elements can be made same. So what 
is the one element that will be can we say something about all these elements that will be here finally or they can be any number all the elements will be one perfect why because see you cannot change this number and since this is a beautiful array all these can be made same so these would be one like these should be one finally so if these should be one we just need to find we just need to find whether it's possible for us to do this thing like any any two consecutive places have the same number then the finally this array will stop being a beautiful array so we just need any two consecutive places to have same element or same value that is other than this value one so what we need to do we just need to find the closest two values like two and two we just need to find like let's say there uh, we have something like one then there is one 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 two one one two three 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 like uh, this is not possible two one one three one one three four one four one so let's say this is the element finally everything should have this so we just need to find any two consecutive like between these two we have these two ones either we can remove this this is one option or we can remove these two these all of these why because if we remove these then the first element is two and we know finally every element should be one because this the original array is beautiful but now the first element is two we cannot change it so again not a beautiful array so either we can delete these threes, these three ones, these two ones, these two, these two, this one, or this one. So we just need to find the minimum of these. Here we have three ones. Here we need to remove three ones, two ones, two ones, two ones, one, one. So the minimum of these is either this or this. So our answer is one. Either remove this one or this one. Is it clear? And why do we, why, how we can achieve this? If we remove this one, we will have three and four. We cannot change these three and four after this point. So let me start from beginning. I'll like quickly recap. First of all, why this approach works. First of all, we'll identify that finally every element in the array would be same as the first element. Why? Because it's a beautiful array and you cannot change the first element. After this point, since every element will be one only, we just need two occurrences of any values x and x which are occurring consecutively because once we have these two values you cannot change any of these because in order to change a value you should have something like one one and some value in between and then if these two are same you can make the middle one also the same but the thing is if you have two consecutive x's then you cannot change them so in order to make these we just need to find between any two like same values, what does the minimum occurrences of ones, including the first, like uh, the elements, the ones which are before every element and the one which is after. So is it clear now? Sir, I have a doubt. Yes, the last element, like you need to count, like this is also one, right? If let's say there were two ones here, then also our answer would have been one. We just removed this one. Why two X's which are different than one? Because then you cannot make them equals to one. Those two X's. Any other doubts? Am I audible? Any other doubts? Yes, no. Okay, like I'm not able to hear you if you're asking using mic, like I'm not connected to audio, so you'll have to write in the chat. Uh, like, sorry, like uh, since I have already connected my mic in the like audio jack, I don't have like, okay, I can change it. Just give me a second.
can uh, now you can unmute yourself and like ask me hello yes yes so what if the first and last elements are different last element is different then the array is not beautiful so it's not possible okay is it clear or like uh, should i explain it more no actually ye doubt aa raha tha karte hue time like agar dono alag ho to ha uh, wo possible nahi hoga cause if this is a this is b you cannot change this element you cannot change this element so the final would have a and b and these two elements are clearly different so that's why this is not a beautiful array okay okay so let's look at the implementation so this is the implementation and in this i have first taken n as input then i have taken the array a as input and uh, what is this condition can someone tell me if maximum element is equals to minimum element then simply print minus 1 can someone tell me what is this yes all elements are same so like usually this has nothing to do with time complexity or anything like you can if you go through a loop and check like whether like how 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 can you check that each and every element of the array is same so you can check that this is equal to this 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 this is equal to this. you can use a set you can use a map you can like do many methods but the thing is this has n log n complexity in worst case by the way n log n this is n log n in computer programming this log n factor won't matter that much so and actually that is not my point uh, this has to be go often my point is sometimes just like see problems a b c were easy so your target should be to solve the problem as quickly as possible so this is one way there are other ways also in which you can write the code and i'm like i'm not saying like you should uh, like uh, write messy code just to avoid two lines but don't use like unnecessary computation if you don't have to okay and like i'm just like telling you this because you're just starting out with this batch so that's one practice that if you don't have to compute anything unnecessarily don't do it use inbuilt functions and uh, like just try to find a way in which you can use the inbuilt function smartly so if this is the condition then all the elements are same the answer is not possible that you cannot make like you cannot just remove some elements and make the array like uh, make the array stop like make the array un beautiful not beautiful so otherwise let's say we are removing every element and this is the count like what is the minimum number of times the first element is occurring between two different elements like two elements which are different than the first element then i'm iterating through the loop i'm checking if the first element is same as this like this element is same as the first element i'm increasing the count otherwise i'm taking the answer as minimum of answer and count and count is made to zero because i am reinitializing it to zero so that it can be used further finally i am taking my count outside loop also can someone tell me why because of this because of this count like once you end this loop like i am only counting my ones once i reach element which is different than one here it won't happen so for including that count and then we i can print it print my answer if you miss this condition your first test case wouldn't be giving you wrong answer but it would fail on pre test like uh, some 
प्री टेस्ट टू और थ्री में भी ओके अनदर क्वेश्चन आई गॉट इन दैट वाई यूज दिस इज इट बिकॉज आई एम ट्राइंग टू सेव सम टाइम नो लाइक फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई हैव अबिट ऑफ राइटिंग इट बैक स्लैश इन I'm I'm not 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 trying to to save some seconds here, like like and like and I I said, you you don't have to over optimize. Like if you are writing, like if writing, something can be done in in two lines and you're doing it in 20 lines, doing 20 then it is a matter of concern. Like because if something goes wrong, you'll have to debug it. You'll have to look at dark code also. But why do I do this? First of all, I have a habit. Second thing is, if you use Endel, like it's a separate discussion. But remember, if you if you're using Endel, it just prints while it is computing like as soon as it finds the end statement the compiler goes to the like the if you have some things the compiler stores them like to optimize they are not directly printed but as soon as the end statement is encountered the compiler just pushes like whatever is stored in the stack gets pushed i think it's not a it's a queue i think not a stack so all the things that are in the queue are pushed and they are finally seen in your output terminal but the thing is if we use a backslash n then it also does the same thing but if you're using fast input output then the thing is it won't after every backslash n it won't just like as soon as a backslash n statement is encountered it won't push the output to the terminal the thing is it will wait it will compute everything goes in the queue then as the program comes to the end the program is terminated everything at once is printed so this saves like this saves a lot of time like this is it around i would say if a fast input output code is taking x amount of time this endl would take 3x or sometimes 4x why for large input output this is the difference because what is happening like uh, some computations are going on as soon as the end l statement is encountered the control goes to the printer and uh, those those things are printed character by character then the control goes back to the logic and assume that this is being happening like this is uh, inside a loop so and the loop is running for uh, 10 to the plus 6 a million times so this would happen a million times so this is slow so that's why and if you're using fast input output with endl you won't get this benefit you won't get this optimization so use fast input output with backslash and this is for c++ again this is not part of the contest but since this is a new batch i'm telling these things in future i won't be covering these things and i like won't usually i won't take these doubts that why i have used this and that any other thing but yeah this is helpful like i think probably this would be taught in level 1 but i don't think this would be taught in level 2 or uh, like uh, above that so but this is helpful for everyone anything else okay so let's go to the next problem so the next problem is given two integers x and y of the same length consisting of digits between 1 and 9 we need to perform the following operation any number of times swap the ith digit of x with the ith digit of y our final task is to swap the digits in a way that the product of x and y is maximum so by looking at the code like let's look at something like let's say we have 99 and we have 11 let's say we have this thing so either we can have this or we can have 9911 and we can have 9111 we can have 199 so like try finding the product of these like these three you will see that this one let's say is a b c this one is maximum like this is the order so during the contest you might would have solved this with an intuition only that these should be like like the both should be as close to each other as possible like uh, rather than having the difference between them as maximum as possible the difference between them should be as small as possible but the thing is how to prove this 
So, how many were able to prove this during the contest? Okay, let, let, like how many want me to prove like why like why is this true? Okay, so like the proof is very simple by the way. Let's see what we have. We have two numbers A and B. Let's say we have two numbers X and Y. And if, by the way, if we are like, we should look at these numbers. If they are have some, like let's say some digits, we should look at these numbers as nine into 10 to the power four plus nine into 10 to the power three plus nine into 10 to the power two plus nine into like, it's not, it should start from three plus nine into 10 to the power one plus nine into 10 to the power zero. Like this is one of the ways to write this number. And similarly for this, I can write it up one into, just give me a second. So that second number can be written as one into 10 to the power three plus one into 10 to the power two similarly. So if you are swapping these two in a way, like I will, I would be writing this thing here and this thing here, but the, like the sum of the two numbers won't change, right? Like the numbers would become nine into 10 to the power three plus one into 10 to the power two. And this number would become one into 10 to the power three plus one into 10, nine into 10 to the power two. And the rest would remain same. So the sum won't change, right? Yes, no. The sum won't change. Okay. So now we have X plus Y is a constant. Is a constant, let's say K. And we need to maximize X into Y. So using this equation, can I not write Y is K minus X? Right. So let's just plug in this Y here. So we have X into K minus X. K minus X. This thing. And if you know, actually, this is a parabola. This is a parabola, like a downward shaping parabola, something like this. And we need to find this thing. This is the point of maxima. How to find it? Just differentiate this. So if we differentiate it, we'll get, let's differentiate this. Why differentiate? Because differentiation is basically finding the slope of this curve. This is this curve. And if we differentiate it, we'll get the slope and we'll compute the slope. Like we'll equate it equals to zero, basically finding the point of this maxima. At this point, the slope is zero. The slope of the tangent is zero. So let's differentiate this. So we'll get d by dx of x k minus x. So this is kx minus x square differentiation d by dx. We'll get k minus 2x. This will become k minus 2x. So if we compute this to 0, we'll get 2x equals to k. x is k by 2. So if x is k by 2, what will be our y? y was k minus x, y will be also k by 2. So both are same. If you go in either, like if you try to increase the difference, the value of product will go down in both direction. In this direction, x is more, in this direction, y is more, right? Doesn't matter. But the thing is, if they are both same, equal, then the product is maximum. So that's why if you are given two numbers, you cannot like always make them same, but what will you do? You'll give one element, like let's say these two digits are same. Okay, let them be. These two are different. So let's say this was nine and this was three. So, okay, you have given nine to this and three to this. After this point, all the bigger digits should go to this number, which was 
given a smaller digit here. Why? So that eventually these two can be as close to the middle as possible. So that's it. That's the solution. Is it clear? And this is the proof. Is it clear? Yes, no. Okay, I'll repeat the solution part. You're given two numbers. Let's say the first digit is same. You cannot do anything about it. The second digits are different, nine and three. Okay, the first one gets nine, the second one gets three. After this point, these should be the bigger ones and these should be the smaller ones. So that, because you have already given this a bigger. No, like, even if you give any bigger, like, even if the all of these are nine and all of these are one, then also, like, let's say this was a four, then also this number would be bigger only. So you're just trying to make them as close as possible to the middle. Like we are minimizing the difference between them. Clear? So let's look at the implementation. So this is the implementation and this I have first taken the X and Y, two strings as input. These are my final strings. Now this is again like a way of writing the implementation. What I have done, I have used a do while, like let's cover the actual logic of implementation in a moment. But what I have done, I have just inserted the starting characters while they both like uh, while the characters are same. And once I found that, okay, the characters are different, then like, since the first one is getting maximum and the second one is getting minimum after that point, the first one will get minimum character and the second one will get maximum character by character. I mean the digits. Now, what is actually being implemented here? Like what does the implementation implementation? Like I have used the do well because first time, irrespective of this condition, even if they are same, I want this to be run. Like this part. Why? Because the fir first character, like uh, the first digit should go in A and the second digit should go in B. Maximum should go in A, minimum should go in B. Even if they are same, doesn't matter. Why I'm starting from D minus N? Because here I'm incrementing it. Why have a D plus one should be less than X dot size? Because once, like what, what, what does do while do? Do while the, in like the, like the control, goes from here, there is no condition. The control first time just goes and the, then it checks this condition. So the next time when this loop runs, since I'm incre incrementing D here, I need to check here for D plus one. After this point, it's just simply if like from D plus one, just go till X dot size minus one and just insert the minimum in A and the maximum digits in B. Finally, we can print A and B. Any doubts? Okay, so let's go to the next problem. Like uh, X can go up till 10 to the 100 basically means that you cannot store the number in an integer. Like you should store it in a string only. There are 100 digits. Is it clear?
Any other doubts? Because like what other data structure can you think of? You can store it in a vector, like again, complicating things. Like, first of all, if you have, like, you're given the input like this, you're given like this, you would be given 100 digits. So how can you, like, you can either take character by character input, then insert in a vector or an array, either take it as a complete as a string. Like, how would you, you're going to take it in an integer or a double? Any other doubts? Okay, let's go to the next problem. So the next problem is there are n different colors. The there are n balls of different colors. Uh, there are balls of n different colors, not n different balls. There are balls of n different colors and each ball of the ith color, like the number of balls having ith color is ai. Now, the balls can be combined into groups and each group should contain at most two balls and the two balls shouldn't have the same color. So, we need to consider all the two to the power n sets of Colors, I'll explain this in a moment. So we need to consider all the two to the power n sets of colors. And for a set of colors, let's denote its value as the minimum number of groups, the balls of those colors can be distributed into. So I'll explain this in a moment. So finally, our target is to calculate the sum of values over all the two to the power n possible sets. So first of all, let me explain what the problem means. So there are n colors. Let's say there are these colors and uh, for each color, there is the number of balls. Now, there are these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are 6 colors. So there are 2 to the power 6 possible sets of colors. Let's say one possible set is having just first color. Next one is having first and third color. Then first, second and third color. Like this, there are total 2 to the power 6. Right? 2 to the power 6 sets of these. Like basically either include this or not include. Include or not include. Include or not include include or not include same thing for these so be, there are two to the power six possible sets now we are given that we can group two balls together so a group can contain at most two balls let's call a group so a group can have either one ball or two balls. These two balls should have different color. Should have different color. Not same color. And for this, it doesn't matter. So then we are given an example. Let's look at this. Let's say there were three balls of some color. Then one first one ball of another color and seven balls of some different color. So then you need to make at least seven groups. Now, do I need to explain this how? Like, so let me explain how. Let's say that these are these stars, these are these triangles, and this is this. So this and this is a group, this and this is a group, this and this is a group. So three groups, four group, 
this is the first group first group second group second group third third fourth fourth so these are all like you can look at the first group different color second group different color balls third group different color balls fourth group different color blocks balls i cannot make a group of these two same color so fifth group just this ball sixth group just this ball seventh group just this ball so minimum number of groups seven for this number of balls if i had three if i had like these colors and i was taking three balls of first like one ball of second seven ball of third is it clear so this is the value for this configuration so this is how i need to find configuration like minimum value or the value for every configuration and i need to find the sum is the problem statement clear now now if we look at the problem constraints n is less than or equal to 5000 so first of all if n is less than 5000 the first thing that should come to our mind we can solve this in n square now how to solve this in n square see first of all let's say we have some dp ij now what does like how to include dp in this let's say our dp i is basically at which ball we are dp ij in this i is basically the ball on which we are okay like up till which ball or up to not ball color like in this like there is like they, we are not given n balls we are given n colors so this is up till which color we have computed and the j is can someone tell me like in this case what should be our j like if i is the color what should be the second thing Yes, balls, basically balls. How many balls have you computed? Like the total number of balls, total balls that you're considering. Let, let's say you're considering first color, third color, and fifth color. So this should be balls of one, balls of color three, and balls of color five. Is it making sense? Yes, no. Okay, so now in order to calculate DP of IJ, what do you need? When you had X number of balls and the previous color was not included, let's say you had the J number of balls and the previous color was not included. So this will be included in I and J. You're just not including the previous color. And let's say you are including the previous color then how would you write this previous color and this so i this color is included like i minus one color is included and you are including the previous color then what should you add else can someone tell me Like if you're adding this and how many balls are getting added because of I, AI, right? So if AI balls are getting added in DP of I, what should I do here? Like how many balls are getting added to J? AI, right? Probably like, I think DP, like um, DP is not covered. That's why like, otherwise this is like usually how we write DP transitions. The one, the first one is not including the second one is including, but it's okay. Like, uh, I think like right now only one or two weeks, not even two weeks have been passed since this patch started. So it's okay. But like, the thing is like, this is the problem with DP cell, like DP problems. Like, once you have solved these problems, then only like you'll get an intuition. Otherwise, like, first of all, like in order to like, first, if you don't know, don't know knapsack, 
like it's really difficult to uh, like understand like how these uh, like how how i have written this like this is very standard uh, dpf ie j plus ai basically there's a knapsack which is having some size and uh, like uh, knapsack is basically you have a bag which has some capacity and uh, you need to take some k items like you can take any number of items but the total weight should not exceed the capacity and you need to maximize your profit but anyway so this is okay now other than this in order to calculate answer what we can do after every ith color we can like go from zero to maximum number of balls like what what is the maximum number of balls there can be the maximum number of balls can be 5000 so we'll go from zero to 5000 and uh, like you don't have to go to 5000 you can go till some also and uh, if the current number of balls is less than a why if the current number of balls like if let's say i'm going like uh, let's say i'm iterating from the number of balls from one to total number of balls total or sum. so if this j is less than a i is less than equals to a basically this is a valid case that up till i and total number of balls is j otherwise like basically if j is less than then it is not a valid case why i think i said incorrectly if this is less than strictly less than then this is not possible why because right now you're considering all the sets which are having this ith ith color right so if it's less than or equals to then either you are not including this i or if you are it's equal then you're just including this only and only including this so in those cases you can just your answer we can just add what was previous so i minus one j and in this you can multiply what the total number of ways in which you can select the ith so how many balls are there of ith ball ith color ai otherwise if this is more then in that case you can group the remaining number of balls like basically if there are these balls and there are some remaining balls so group group and group so there are j balls right so if there are j balls which are more than like j is currently more than a so we can group these a balls so how will you group these a balls same thing will come here but now during multiplication these are not the number of groups earlier these were the number of groups ai groups ai balls ai groups okay i'm not able to listen like is someone saying anything yes no yes yes i was just having one question ankit that yes. in this yes am i audible yes yes you are audible so can i complete this and then i then like then you can okay, ask okay yes sure okay so this is the number of groups in case you're not grouping and if you can group in that case can someone tell me like if let's say there are j groups like the, how many groups will be formed just you need to take you need to take seal like seal of this total number of balls ai were this j were the balls that are being grouped with these balls and divided by two seal of this so again like i have already explained plus one here so this is getting multiplied with this i minus one basically up till previous and j is the total number of balls up till previous color this is simply up till previous color j balls are there and you are just including these now like what was the doubt yes the doubt was that let's say you are at a state like dpij okay and it doesn't make any sense to iterate over the states like dp i minus one to zero a i minus one right like when the value of the sum of the previous chosen ball will be less than my number of current ball yes so in that case that, that that's the thing right in your current number of balls will then not be able to be grouped with those so yes so ultimately that 
the value should be ai only yes the number of groups yes right okay. so that's why ai and if you are able to group then divide by 2 right okay like let me show you the implementation probably then see first of all i have taken the values as input and i am taking from one not from n that because it helps in like visual like understanding the dp better like when we are writing so i have sorted it from again from 1 to n this is one like the base sum is zero sum is just a helper i think sum is like just a helper like i have used here i will explain what the sum is like this should be prefix sum like up till now how many balls i have encountered like that then i'll only go from 0 to that i can go till 5k also basically we can do this also but there is no point in doing this because those values are right now zero only so now what we are doing we are going through each color then up till now how many balls we have for those i am calculating ij if this is the number of like this is the color and these are the number of balls so this is just including that value and this is if ai balls are included then this is the total number of balls now so in this i am including this so this is not including ith and this like this is not including ith this is including ith then we are going from 0 to sum again we can go to 5 to the power k 5 into 10 to the power 3, and if j is less than i, just these are the number of groups. Include multiply in this. Otherwise, these are the number of groups. Multiply in this, and at each step we need to take mod. Finally, this is why because the total number of balls of this color are also being added to sum. Now for the next time, sum will be up. having updated we don't need to do this we can up go till 5 into 10 to the power 3 also finally we need to print answer so anything i know like this seems uh, like dp solutions is usually short but understanding it it's really difficult Uh, like uh, especially if it's not written by you and i'll share all the codes don't worry like uh, no no i like i don't have to paste it in the chat uh, like i'll share it with the managers once the recording is uploaded like uh, there you can get the submission links also anything else so that's it uh